Hello and welcome to Project Reboot at the Scrap Store in Swindon. Uh, welcome to another video. Um, I'm here with uh, Jacob and I'm Nigel. Um, now we've had some Viglan all-in-one um, PCs in today. They look like this. They've got a monitor and the PC on the back. Now most of these came in with uh, Intel dual core processors in there. However, this one has got a little Intel i3 sticker on here. Now, which is intriguing. So, I've come up with a plan. The plan is to take the guts out of this, yet to be seen. We'll have a look inside what's in there. And we've got these, which are HP Great Big Towers, but it's got an i5 sticker on this. So, I'm hoping we're going to be able to swap the i3 from here, put it in there, and put the i5 in here. Yeah? So we possibly into this case, bring that down Jacob, that might be out of shot there, this little Silverstone case, and we might be able to make a nice little mid-range gamer out of it. That'd be brilliant. Right, now, Jacob's going to explain the differences between the range of Intel chips, so you can understand, if you don't really understand about the, the range of Intel chips, where the i3 and the i5 sits, comparing it to cars. Hi right, Jacob. Now, the latest processor from Intel is the Core i9 and that would be sort of a Tesla Model S. Uh, the latest i7 would be a Jaguar I-Pace, so that's fairly fast. Then we go to an older i7 which is more of a Lamborghini Countach. This is the 80s comparison isn't it, against the electric car. Mm. Then we have the modern uh, i5, which would be a Mercedes EQ. Don't know what that is. That's an i5, yeah. Yeah. Um, then going back to this generation, uh, it'd be more of a Sierra Cosworth Ford. Going to an i3 from the latest generation would be a BMW i3. And the older, like this one, would be a Mark 1 Golf GTI. So they're still fairly fast. But then we get on to older processors such as the old Pentium. So that would be, the latest would be a Nissan Leaf, so not great but still reliable. And then the older ones would be a Vauxhall Cavalier from the 80s, which your grandparents still probably drive. Going further down the line, uh, with an Intel Celeron you'd have a Fiat 500 uh, electric. And then the original Celeron would be a Nissan Micro Mark 1. <sighs> Brilliant. Right, so let's uh, let's have a look in the guts of this then, Jacob, shall we? Yep. yep. Right. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, a bit dusty, Nigel. Yeah. Right, remove the front tray. Doorway, I see. Well, it's certainly seen some life. Now, let's have a look to see what we've got here. Now, this is intriguing. What's that blue slot? That looks to me like a 16-lane PCI Express slot. Does it not? Mm. And, the, and it's a, it looks like a standard... It's an MSI board. It's an MSI H61... Let's get that up in the light. Let's see what we're going here. H61MP31G3. Right, now, that's a MATX motherboard. I can't work out if that's mini ATX or micro ATX. But the thing is with this, see, the board is strangled in this design here. So we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to liberate it from this box and be able to put it in a case um, with a proper power supply and to be able to put a, a decent graphics card in it. And now I reckon we've got a mid-range gamer there. So the next shot you'll see is Jacob blasting all the dust out because he likes doing that. All right, Jacob, let it rip. Alright, now, so we've given it a good blast up, and as you can see, this is, we can actually see what we've got now. 
So yeah, we've got an, uh, an MSI H61MP31. Now I've looked this up on, on the interweb, on the MSI website, and this is an LGA1155 motherboard, which means it takes um, a CPU that's got 1,155 pins on it. This is going to be a third generation uh, CPU. Um, the i3 and the corresponding i5 is a hopefully is a direct swap. That's the idea. That's the idea, Jacob, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So let's liberate the motherboard from the case. Right, so we've li liberated it from the uh, case now, and we're keeping the I.O. shield. This is the I.O. shield. That goes on the back of the PC on the new case. And uh, we're going to, for now, we're going to keep the heatsink and fan in place, which is this great big thing on top. Uh, and we're going to get it on our Franken rig, our test bench, to see how it runs first, see what we've got, and then we'll make a decision. Alright, so here is the donor PC. This is going to donate the i5. Uh, let's have a look inside it then, Jacob. So the process is up here. So we'd have to do those four bolts and then get to the tube that way. Welcome to Frankenrig. This is a botched together um, test bench that I created out of an old case. And I've uh, ripped out uh, a motherboard um, tray and uh, kind of fabricated a bit of a um, uh, back plate on there. So turn up on its uh, horizontal side, Jacob. So this is, we're going to put the new mother, the motherboard on this. Don't need the IO shield for this now, do we? Okay. All right, let's see what we can do. Let's see if it fits. Alright, so just turn it around Jacob so we can show where the I.O. shield is. Alright, so all the ports are coming out the back there. We're not going to put the I.O. shield on for now. Um, but this gives us a, a, a working platform where we've got all the connectors onto a power supply that's already built in. So connect everything up together Jacob. Yep. So that's the, that's the four pin uh, motherboard, uh, sorry, CPU connector just placed on there. What are we putting in there then, Jacob? This is the 24 pin main board connection, so it supplies power to the entire board. Right. We now need. So we've put uh, on the test bench now, we've fired it up, and uh, let's see if we can get a BIOS screen up. F1. Have we got a keyboard and mouse no attached to it? Plugged in. Right, now we've got the BIOS screen up. So what have we got? We've got an i3-2120. Now we can do much better than that. So let's, um, let's pull the i5 out, Jacob, and uh, see what that is, and we shall make some comparisons. So now what we're doing is we're taking the core i5 out of this uh, HP machine to put into the test rig. Uh, to see if we can get an i5 running in the i3 Viglin. Should reveal an i5. We now have a Core i5-3470. Oh, it on the deck. There we are, so Intel Core i5-3470, running at 3.2 GHz. That's what's come out of the big uh, HT tower, and that's what's going to go into our MSI motherboard. In part two of the Viglan Liberation, will Jacob fit the i5 CPU correctly? 
Do we get bent pins? Do we forget to apply thermal paste? Does it start up or go bang? Do we have a potential gaming PC? Benchmarks. How much better is the i5 over the i3? And can you build your own gaming PC? So join us next time when we put this with our brand new Core i5 in this machine a little like that. Hang on. Nigel, do we have any drives? I've got some drives. It's crucial. Oh, nah, but it's quite important. Ah, I've got quite important. Quite important.